Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to Iron Anchor Cycles. So today we're gonna to be taking a break from our Dyna projects that we've been doing over the last couple of weeks. And we're gonna get back to a little bit of customer work. So obviously I've got a big pile of parts here that we're gonna install. And no, this stuff is not going on my black Dyna. All these parts are going on a Lowrider ST that's sitting on the lift right behind the Dyna. So I'm excited to get going with all this stuff, but figured I would show you everything that we're gonna install first, and then we can get into it. So the centerpiece, I suppose, of what we're gonna be doing, hopefully is obvious, is these Y-spoke wheels from Arlen Ness. So I think these are killer looking wheels, and actually, I haven't put a pulley on this side yet, so you get a better kind of look at just the raw wheel. Um, these are super nice and maybe obvious from just being able to see them and maybe not is the size of these wheels is we've got uh, a 19 inch front wheel, which is the same size as what comes on the bike. But then we've got an 18 inch rear wheel to replace the 16 inch wheel uh, that comes from the factory. So this is gonna give this bike a really cool, really you know, unique different look than how it was from the factory. And certainly, you know, you could just powder coat the wheels that are on there and you'd get yourself black wheels. But I think this is just a nice, uh, upgrade to go one step beyond that. So I'm excited about it. Uh, in addition uh, to the wheels, obviously we've got rotors put on here already. These rotors are from Ness as well. And in fact, there's actually a bunch of different parts here uh, based on the way that Ness does this. So the way Ness does their wheels is the wheels don't come with hubs pre-installed. You order those separately and then put them together, which obviously I've already done. But what's nice about that is it makes the wheels pretty universal. And then you just buy the hub that you need and you can put it on whatever bike, uh, as long as they've got a hub that'll work on that bike. In addition to that, obviously we've got the rotors I mentioned, and then the last piece of the puzzle is the mounting screws, which are actually titanium, uh, that Ness sells either in the polish that you see on these wheels or in black. So that's a, a nice additional upgrade that you can make when you're doing spending a bunch of money on wheels and rotors. Uh, you can put some nice hardware on as well. So obviously the customer opted to do uh, the polished ones that match the carrier fasteners as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you want to get more info on these wheels or any of this stuff, this stuff can all be drop shipped from us. So uh, happy to help anybody out if you're looking for any of these Nest products, if you like how they look when they go on the bike. So that's the wheels. Obviously, we've got a set of tires here. We've got Metzler Cruise Techs ready to go on. Uh, that's probably the next thing I'm going to do. Just figured I'd show you the wheels by themselves before we go ahead and put the tires on. So beyond that, uh, we've got some suspension stuff here as well. So uh, the next piece in terms of when the customer uh, was kind of thinking about what they wanted to do was this set of replacement triple trees from Krauss. So just like everything that Krauss makes, these are a really nice product, super strong, and they look great. Um, definitely excited about getting these on. And then in addition to that, hopefully you can see here, we've got a set of Olin's cartridges to go in as well. So that was one of those uh, kind of add-ons at the end, although not an inexpensive or a small add-on. Uh, but the customer kind of said, hey, we're gonna be taking this stuff all apart anyway. I'm gonna probably wind up wanting to do front suspension. Let's just do it at the same time while we've got everything apart. So that's what we're gonna, that is what we're gonna do. And that is today's project. So I'm gonna get these tires put on these wheels and then we're gonna head over to the bike and we'll start doing disassembly and we'll get all this stuff done. So stick around. All right, so here's the bike we're gonna be working on today. Like I said, Lowrider ST. Hopefully you can see this customer already has done a bunch of this stuff to the bike before uh, starting on this project. Got a pipe forward controls, bars and risers, air cleaner, seat, a whole bunch of good stuff he's done. So I think the wheels are gonna be a really nice addition and the uh, triple trees and suspension, obviously a huge addition. So definitely excited for all of this. So I think what we're gonna get started is with getting the rear wheel put on just cause why not? Um, really it's just about instant gratification, I think. Uh, we can start taking the front apart, but it's a lot more work before we get the, the front wheel put on. So. Figured might as well just throw the rear wheel on while we're here and we can at least get a sense of how this stuff's gonna look on the bike really quickly. So I'm excited to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this wheel off and we'll get the new one put on. That axle is dry as a bone. Looks like there was not a drop of anti-seize on there. So good thing we're taking this out now before it's stuck.
All right, so with the rear wheel removed, the only thing we've got to do before we put the new one on is move this sprocket over from the old wheel to the new wheel. All right, so here's our new wheel with the original rotor put on with a set of new uh, ARP bolts. Don't want to reuse the original ones, so we went with ARPs for the replacements. So let me get this slid into place and we'll get it put on. All right, so that's our rear wheel put on, and honestly, I think it looks killer. I'm really, really digging how that's looking on here. Uh, contrast with the rotor, or the black, with the gray, all of it, really liking it. Uh, one last step to do here, I got the axle torqued down, gotta put our uh, clip back in here. And then, actually one last step is set of new brake pads to go along with the new rotor. Always a good idea to change the pads when you put a new rotor on. Uh, you don't want any imperfections from your old rotor getting transferred through the pads into the new ones. If you got any debris or any warping or any unevenness, you can mess up the new rotor if you don't change the pads. So new pads going on. All right, new pads put in and now we can go ahead and just get the caliper put back in place. All right, with the rear done, time to start moving on to the front. Obviously, we've got a lot more to do here. So the order of operations is gonna be, I'm gonna go ahead and get the wheel and then fork legs removed. Then we'll move up and we'll get the triple trees done. And then once that's taken care of, we'll get the fork legs reinstalled and then the new wheel. So we've got a whole bunch of steps here. I'm just gonna start with the disassembly and uh, we'll make it happen. Okay, well, after a little bit of uh, fiddling around and figuring out the best uh, order of things to do, uh, obviously you can see we've got the steering head off and uh, here it is in my hands. So we're not gonna be reusing any of these parts, uh, notably the bearing that's on here, we're just gonna replace. Um, no sense in using old bearings when we can just put new ones in. So I'm gonna put these down. So you'll notice we have the tank removed also with the bars kind of lying here. Now this might've been a little bit easier if I had disconnected the uh, clutch perch and brake perch so I could take the bars entirely off, but I didn't do that. So the bars are kind of just perched here a little bit precariously. So I'm gonna try and get the triple trees back on as quickly as I can so we can kind of get this situation controlled here. Uh, but the reason this is all lying here and the reason the tank is off is because you have to pull the wires out of the top of the top triple tree or out of the hole in the top triple tree, I should say. And in order to get the wires out of the grommet on the side of the bike, it's much easier to have the tank removed. So that is what leads us to being where we are here now. So in order to keep moving, I'm going to grab a new set of bearings off the shelf and we're gonna take uh, the lower triple tree, the new one, over to the press and get the uh, bearing put on. Might not actually even use the press, I might just knock it on. We've got a tool for it. I'll show you how I do it uh, and you'll see how that goes. But hopefully we'll have these triple trees at least up in place, not necessarily finally connected, but at least get this all kind of buttoned up so we can at least make a little bit more progress. All right, so here is our new lower tree. Obviously it was all connected together in the packaging, disconnected the upper from the lower, pretty straightforward. So what we're gonna do here is take this new bearing, which I have packed with grease, and I'm gonna put this dust seal in place underneath it. And then we're going to slide the bearing onto there. And you'll notice as I clean my hands off, the bearing doesn't slide all the way down. Uh, that's gonna be an interference fit at the bottom. So it's going to need to be 
pressed in. It's just pressed in, pressed in. Um, not necessarily with a press. So it kind of depends on the situation. Sometimes they go on a little easier, sometimes a little harder. Uh, but what we're going to do is use this tool from Motion Pro that either with or without a press, this is the sort of thing you'll want to use. Um, there are other ways to do this, uh, sort of using a uh, like a pipe and you can do some other stuff, but essentially you want to be pressing on that inner race there to knock it down. So I'm going to use something like this, slide it over. What makes this nice is we're going to take this little collar, and we're going to install it into the tool, and this is going to sit down there and it's going to press the race in, or the, the race in in the right place. All right. All right, put that on there and grab a hammer of some kind. All right. Okay. So as you can see, that was very easy. It was just a couple of taps. Um, we've got that seated down there where it belongs. So you really didn't, you don't need to use a press for, for this. You can, like I said, where the press comes in more into play and I was sort of thinking about this is getting the shaft out of the bottom triple tree like in a stock application if you're taking them apart to powder coat it that's really where you'd be using the shop press when you're doing the bearings just like that is all you need so I'm going to go ahead and get this ready to get installed we'll get the top piece ready and we'll show you going we'll show you how they go on the bike So with the trees just sort of here held in place just loosely with the uh, uh, stem screw, you can go ahead and start to get the end play on the bearings set up correctly. Okay, so did the initial uh, procedure here of tightening and then loosening this bolt, turning it and final torquing it. Now we got to do the uh, pinch bolt here, which is going to lock these two pieces together. Now, they don't call this out in the service manual or anything, but I feel like it's easier to get these aligned properly if you just stick one of the fork legs back in up here to get the alignment. So that's what I've done. And now I'm going to torque this bolt down to 20 foot pounds and our trees should be done. Okay, we got one leg in there, but that feels really good. So I'm gonna pull this fork leg back out and get all these connections redone, and then we'll move on to getting the fork legs done. All right, with the new triple trees in place, it's time to get the Olin's cartridges installed in these fork legs. Now, we just did a video going over this, which I will put a link to right up here, so you can check that out if you want to. I'm not gonna film any of this because it's exactly the same thing as we did before. So go check that out if you missed it and then meet me back here when these are done and we'll go get them put in the bike. All right, so got our Olin's cartridges installed in the forks. And also I forgot to mention, we've got this additional piece here too the customer brought me to install while we were doing this. It's like a, I don't know, guard for the bottom. Not necessary because the fender has that built into it. Um, customer just liked them. I don't know who makes these. I don't know anything about them. So can't tell you about these other than the fact that they're here and I'm putting them on. Um, I wouldn't if it was me, but you know, not my bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide each of these in and get them at least uh, held in place, not final torque down so I can confirm the heights. And once I made sure they're even, we'll get them torqued down. All right, with the fork legs snug in place and confirming that they're at the correct height or the same height, I should say. Go ahead and torque the uh, pinch bolts in the top and bottom trees. Okay, with the front end reassembled, we can go ahead and get the front wheel put back on.
All right, so I got the left side done and now I'm gonna do the right side caliper. So we got new pads to put in and I gotta put spacers uh, behind the tabs for this guy to mount in the counter bores on the foot. So no big deal, we'll just uh, make it happen. All right, let's get this fender put on. All right, well, the bike's back together and that's gonna do it. So I realized I didn't give you guys a shot of the triple trees and forks all put together from the top. So I will give you that shot uh, before we end the video, but figured I'd just take this opportunity, just review what we did. Uh, got our wheels on, brakes on, fork cartridges, these little covers, uh, triple trees, everything's on, everything's buttoned up, uh, new rotors, new pads. I think uh, just from an, an aesthetic perspective, these wheels look awesome on this bike. I really, really dig how they came out. The gloss black works really well uh, with this bike, particularly with the gray paint. I'm sure it would look good on a black or another color bike too, but it looks really, really good on this one as far as I'm concerned. Um, not a huge fan of these things still. I think seeing the slider kind of gives you that visual of the inverted front end and you kind of lose that now. Um, so if it's me, I don't think I would do these, but uh, like I said, not my bike, not my choice. Uh, but the triple trees look awesome. The cartridges look good. And of course it's gonna ride right. I mean, it's got Olin's components there in the, in the front end now. So definitely gonna be nothing but improvement in terms of handling. And while the rear suspension hasn't been done, I know the customer is planning on doing that uh, before we get to the spring. So this bike's gonna be set up and ready to go. So with that said, I'm gonna end the video and uh, I'll just give you guys a quick shot of uh, the top and let you see the whole thing uh, before I end it. So uh, that said, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.